Have you ever heard the saying that there are two things that are certain in this world? Death, taxes. I'm gonna add a third to the list. I think there's a third one that needs to be added to the list. And that is, if you're in the business world at all, whether you are an entry level employee at a Fortune 100 company, the person doing the bookkeeping at a local small business, the entrepreneur CEO starting the thing in the first place, there is going to be a lot of stress and a lot of anxiety that comes with just doing business. It's the reality, right? It is amplified 100% when you are in the midst of startup world or when you're a couple years into your business and maybe cash flow is getting a little tight, expenses are getting out of control, key person leaves. There's always going to be something that's going to come that is going to cause a lot of stress and a lot of anxiety in your life. And the way we see it, you got two choices. One, you can kind of run from it, pretend it's not there, ignore it and hope that it goes away on its own. There's two, which is the one that we talk about a lot today. You can learn to deal with it and attack it head on because it's not gonna go away. No matter where you are in your journey, you're gonna have to deal with uncomfortable, stressful, anxious times. And learning to cope with it and learning on how, how to get your mind to process it, move on and deal with the situation is going to just be a, a vital, vital, vital mindset, mind hack, if you will, that you have to understand the more you go into business. You're gonna hear Oli and I discuss this as we talk about switchback and where we are in our business and the stresses and the anxiety that comes with where we are in our journey and some of the ways that we cope with uh, whatever pops up. So if you're sitting there thinking, man, there's something crazy I'm dealing with at work today. I don't really understand how to get through this or man, this sucks. I just, I need to hear a couple ways to deal with stress and anxiety. This is probably going to be a perfect episode for you to listen to. Look, you're starting a new business. You're starting a company. You're, you've been doing this for a year or two. And chances are you've tried a lot of things that have not worked. And chances are you've had a lot of sleepless nights and a lot of just stress and anxiety. We're gonna dive into just, well, A, explain, it happens to everybody, right? And some of the, the struggles that we're having right now as a company and the, the angst that comes with it. But um, talk about a few ways to manage it because no matter if you're starting a new business on your own or if you're working for a corporation or whatever the case might be, right? You're gonna have things that blow up. You're gonna have sleepless nights. Uh, you're going to have to figure out how to manage this in business in general, but as an entrepreneur, as a CEO, as an owner of a company, it's going to be amplified. So um, how to manage anxiety as an entrepreneur is, is sort of the, the gist of the, the conversation today. And Oli, I, I want you to just lay it out for folks right now where this is May 2024. <clears throat> We're not even a year old yet. What's going through your head when you think about anxiety as it relates to switchback? By the way, I'm just kind of chuckling here because the way you're talking about it reminded me of the South Park. If you pizza when you French fry, when you're supposed to French fry, you're going to have a bad time. I don't know if you French fry when you're supposed to pizza, you're going to have a bad time. It's like, in I know the, in what this, you're talking about. You, you've never seen a South Park episode where they teach him how to ski and he's like, <clears throat> no. pizza and French fries. He's like, if you French fry when you're supposed to pizza, you're going to have a bad time because you're not going to stop. And it just uh. made me think like, Dude, if you don't manage your stress and anxiety, you're going to have a bad time because uh, you will. I think one of the things that I've struggled with recently is a lot of times people are like, hey, how you doing? Like I used to always say live in the dream because it's an easy default bullshit answer, right? But if I was being honest and people ask me that question, be like, dude, I'm mentally, I'm mentally fucked. Like I'm struggling and it's not fun and it requires a lot of work and a lot of effort to remain optimistic and positive during the day and at night, and in the middle of the night, in the morning. Um, because you just have an immense amount of anxiety more often than I've ever had anxiety. I would see Abby laughing. She's like, what do you mean? Um, but seriously, like I, you know, I, I used to be, you know, before I started my own business, I, the anxiety was there, but it was anxiety when I had to see the president and CEO. Was, there was never really anxiety outside of that. Um, now, it's, it, there's a lot of it, right? And so... It, it, and it's it's roller coasters. We've all seen those charts and those those you know what it's like to be an entrepreneur. It's a lot more difficult than that. Like I, I don't think there's a roller coaster chart that actually shows how low those valleys are and how steep it is coming back up. What are the three things that give you the most angst in business or in life with, with switchback? With switchback. I think the three things right now, and I think it can change, but the three things over the last week, one is digital marketing. What the fuck is going on? 
I think that's a big one because that, which is leading to lack of sales, right? Like we were doing great. We were having, we were having a great day, day after day. And then it was like, boop, zero. And for five days, zero. And like, I stopped even looking at my email um, from that standpoint. I'm like, well, we're not gonna get a fucking sale today. Like, what do I care? And a, a little facetious. So digital marketing, sales, and honestly, keeping, keeping you and Abby, right? Figuring out how to get this thing profitable. You, you can't, we can't force our way to success. And so I, we need to get to a certain point so we can pay you, Matt, and we can pay, we can, well, we're, we're already paid Abby, but we can continue to pay Abby. That's a lot of stress, right? I never, I never gave a shit about payroll and people's salaries and what was going on. It didn't matter. It wasn't my responsibility. Yeah. Now it's my responsibility. And I would say like that might even be in the number one bucket is they all tie together, but that sales piece is really the big, I mean, it's, it's, it encompasses, it's like, it's like the, the chart, right? Sales, if we get to the certain threshold, then we can do all these different things. But if we don't get to that threshold, you gotta go, you gotta go do something else. Abby is gonna be doing God knows what. And we're going to have a bunch of smoothies to eat for the rest of my life as my family. And that's the only thing we're going to have for the next four years. So officially, what are we, six months into this journey? Like, is November what we're saying is our official, official start? Date? Yeah, I mean, if you look at cash, like true cash burn, we're almost one year because okay. we launched May 23rd of last year. So but yeah, year. but it's, we're, we're really only six months in. And I would you say the vast, vast majority of what gives you anxiety is cash, <laughs> is the money part? Big time, like I, which is weird because like on the on the on the home front, like it is what it is. I can sell more shit. I've already sold a bunch of stuff in my house. I will continue to sell items in my house. It's the business front of the cash flow, right? I just want we just and I, I know I sound like a petulant child. I just want to get to the point where we're not burning so much cash, and things are covering. Like even if we just get to break even, man, I'll celebrate with a tattoo on my ass. <laughs> <laughs> you guys heard it. Actually, it's a tramp stamp. Documented. Um, so right now, the, with, with this week, I think this is interesting for, for everyone to understand. The, the Oli just said it. It's been a few days. No sales have come in at all. So he's very anxious on the money side. Last week, what were you very anxious about, though? Packaging. Packaging. And like to the point where you, I'm assuming you couldn't sleep, woke up in the middle of the night, we're just doing all sorts of crazy shit because you thought something was wrong with packaging. It was like back to last summer PTSD, man. I had packaging in the bathroom, in the, in the sink. I had packaging in the oven, outside, in the gutters. Like, I mean, like it's like a fucking Easter egg hunt around our house for, <laughs> for smoothies now because I forgot where I put them all. But moral of the story, like there wasn't actually an issue and I just overreacted. So I, I think, you know, <clears throat> A big aha for me, being not the person who is financially on the hook for everything here, is like just watching you. I have my own anxieties and my own things that drive me nuts, but I'm not, at the end of the day, I'm not signing on the line that I'm taking on all this debt load. You are. So the money part to me, of course, it makes total sense, but, but that's not the only thing that is going to be really stressful when you're in a business, starting a business, running a business, right? It just depends on the week and whatever the fire is. How are you managing that? Like the money part is always there, I'm assuming, because no matter what, you always want more sales. But all these other fires that pop up and all these other things that are going to trigger just a ton of anxiety and stress, like what have you learned to do to cope with some of this? Getting away from my computer and my phone. Shut off the computer. Yeah, I mean like at the end of the day, right? And I think this is the toughest piece and it, it maybe I'm wrong. I don't think I am like I, we we can't wish the product good on people, right? We can't we can't sit here and go like I wish everybody would buy this product cuz that's not how the world works. And no matter how hard we wish and how much energy we spend looking at the computer, like it's not going to increase our sales. There's a method to it. Every brand knows that. We are figuring out that method. We're doing the right stuff. So getting away from the computer is a big one. And, and honestly, Matt, like yesterday, I mean, I, I, it was Monday, right? Yeah, Monday. And, you know, luckily on Mondays, I got a lot of family stuff and, you know, we got a bunch of shit going on. But it was tough. Like, I, la you know, when I left the office or like in the afternoon, I was like, man, like I got to go do anything but think about work. So I came in here and I reshuffled a bunch of boxes and built a little box fort in our storage room. Um, and then yeah, I got home and it wasn't, I thought it'd be easier when I got home, right? I was like, okay, like the anxiety will be gone because I'll be busy. Until I just shut my brain off by focusing on one task, 
I couldn't shut my brain off. So, you know, made dinner for the kids. My wife and my daughter were at soccer or, or out doing something. I can't remember. For me, where where I de-stress, where I don't think, how I handle that stress is three ways. One, exercise, physical exercise. Um, going for a run, going for a bike ride, working out. I just don't, I don't stew on things. Number two is doing something with my hands. I, I love to do things with my hands. So we bought a play set for the kids and I've been putting that together and it's a complicated play set to put together. And I'm having so much fun doing it. And while I'm doing it, I'm not thinking at all about switchback, which is like the greatest thing in the world. Because again, Matt, what, what good would sitting there for two hours at night dwelling about switchback, what would it actually do? Would we all of a sudden get 40 sales? No, your brain's so locked in on, on the problem. You're not thinking any solutions. You're not exactly. thinking, how, how are we going to get better or fix this thing? Because you're too stressed out with, ah, we're not making money or whatever the case. And I, I, I think this is a really good point, right? I, I, I struggled with this and I'm reading a great book and I've, I think I've come to the realization. I'm flawed in so many freaking ways. And I have always, I, I have always defaulted to putting other people first before me. And even in my personal physical life, the same thing, like, oh no, like kids, this like, you, you, to some extent, in order to manage anxiety, you got to be selfish and at least give yourself an hour or two hours a day for you to get things done that you want to do, that you need to do, et cetera. And the reason I say this, like, I love to golf. I've, I haven't golfed at all by myself. I'll golf once by myself, nine holes. I need to make it a point and just say, fuck it. I'm going to golf 18 holes every Wednesday morning, first one off, and I'm going to go do it because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that. 18 holes, I don't think about work. I'm having so much fun. I'm in the moment. I'm enjoying it. And those type of things are, are imperative for me to manage my, my anxiety and my stress. If, like, get, do what, whatever it is that gets your mind off the issue, yeah. go do it as long as it's a healthy behavior. I've started running. I, right, I do marathons and run a lot over the last couple of years. I didn't always. I just started doing it in my 40s. And the thing I've noticed most, like you said, when you're really struggling with something, if I go and just go run, just easy, just a easy, you know, couple mile run, 15 minutes into the thing, my brain has already switched into like, okay, stop. We're not worrying about the, the problem anymore. Now it's thinking, how do we solve it? How do we fix it? What can we try? What do we do? Um, and just getting out in nature with some exercise and some movement, it's like it flips a switch in your body to go, okay, we can get this. We can, we can manage this. We can fi figure this thing out. So Matt, before you got into running, what was your, what was your anxiety? Like, what did you do to manage stress and anxiety? Cause it really like, correct me if I'm wrong, but the last couple of years, you really adopted a healthy lifestyle, right? Uh, it's been a journey. I would say it's been probably 10 ish years in the making. Uh, in the last two years is when I, I started running. But, um, I mean, I, I've struggled with actual, and we've talked about this on a different episode, uh, actual anxiety and actual panic attacks, yep. right? For a very long time. So I think I'm not a good person to ask on this particular one because the way I've dealt with it over the last 25, 30 years is not like how most people, like I literally can shut my brain off because I had to for years because I refuse to medicate and do that other stuff. And so I learned like, okay, if I'm anxious about something, I literally just turn it off. I shut it off. I stop. I go. I move on. And my brain just goes. That's bad in some sense because I don't address the problem. I just ignore it. Another thing I used to do, and I don't do it anymore, and it's just like you see in the movies, right? Oh, I need a beer. Oh, I need a glass of wine. Oh, I'm going to get wasted tonight. It, it works in the moment. Like, it does. It, but it only works because it shuts your brain off. And, and so it doesn't fix anything. It just makes you stop agonizing over the thing dude right? I, I, it was so funny you say that because I, I shortly before i quit drinking i i was listening to a tim ferris podcast and he always asked people like what um you know what's one thing you put on a billboard which is a great yeah, great yeah. question yeah and i think i can't remember his guy or lady but it was like drinking today is borrowing happiness from tomorrow and i was like holy shit like it's so true right you see it all the time. And I think that's the number one way Americans deal with stress and anxiety. And the fact that a lot of people hate their lives, they just drink. Oh, because you forget about it in the moment. Then you wake up the next day and it's this vicious cycle. But I send that to Matt. Like, I, I, I love to bake. I mean, I love to, I love baking. I love cooking. I will spend my entire day in a kitchen as long as I don't have three gremlins running around me. But like, same thing though. Like, I want to be healthier, but yet I'm baking chocolate chip cookies 
and eating seven of them. They're, they don't really go hand in hand, do they? It's so like, I know that I'm medicating with that cookie. So now like it's finding those outlets. And I think the one thing is that we, we can all probably agree on is that physical exercise is an amazing for mental health. Yeah. In fact, I, I saw on Apple News yesterday, Matt, that there was a study, sleep doesn't clear toxins from your brain, but exercise does. So like exercise is imperative to proper brain health and proper brain function. Yeah. It's I crazy. Think, you know, above and beyond the exercise piece, the thing that most people forget about and part of why we have this podcast and why we so openly share everything that's going on in the business is that you, you need to realize you're, you're not the only one struggling with whatever this thing is. We are not the only food company right now struggling with Meta. We're not the only e-com company that's not having sales where we would like them to be through paid media right now. And we know that because we have a network, we've talked about networks, as, and that's the episode I screwed up. Uh, but we have a network, we can, we can go leverage and be like, hey, I have this problem. Well, I don't know what to do. And then it's amazing, it's amazing how much relief you feel when they say, I have that problem too. You're not alone. You're and, not the only one struggling with this thing. And so I think that's, that's tactic number two. Go talk to people. Go talk to people that you can learn from that are in the same, you know, similar boat as you um, that you can brainstorm and ideate and just realize, like, okay, there's a problem here. Other people are dealing with it. How do we fix it? Matt, that, that's great advice. Share. Find your confidants. Find the people that you can sit down and trust and you can talk to, right? Because what I can talk to my wife about in, in, in certain things, like, I'm not – I. It, isn't the same as what I can talk with someone in business about, right? Like it, she doesn't want to hear about my struggles, you know, daily with, with work, et cetera. I mean, she does, but, but not to the extent that other people do. And like, I'm, I'm having lunch with the guy on Thursday and he's a great friend. I consider him a mentor and a friend and confidant. And every time we talk, it's always, you know, he's like, Hey, how are you doing? But it's not like, Hey, how you doing? Oh, great. Let's, let's talk about the Timberwolves game. It's literally like, Dude, I'm struggling. Like I, I, these are three areas that I am just, I'm beating myself up on. I can't get over it. Why, like, why can't I just get out of this headspace? Find those people, and if you don't have one of those people, I guarantee you, there's someone around you that wants to be that person. People, like, like I know we're a little bit off Facebook from an anxiety and stress standpoint. Talking about this stuff makes it sound really stupid. In the sense of like, if I just sit down and tell tell Matt, like, man, I'm so pissed at five days of sales, like we're never gonna sell another fucking thing. And Matt looks at me, he's like, did you just hear yourself? Like, you don't think we're ever gonna sell another item? And then it's like, oh yeah, like that is a really dumb thing. It's just gonna, it, we're just trying to figure this out. Once, yep. one, once we get through it, that is a great way to get rid of that stress and anxiety too. Just, just say it out loud, journal it. Like that's the other piece for me, writing it down, write down all these thoughts. Someday, hopefully we can look back and go, wow. That was wild. Or maybe someday I look back and go, holy shit, I was right. Do you ever try to, like when you've got these big issues burning and like causing you all the stress and anxiety, do you ever think about like what control the controllables? Like all some the of this stuff is just completely, no matter what we do, it wouldn't matter. This is the, the issue the deal, that we have to deal with, this, whatever. I, I, dude, you're spot on. I can't control, we can control what ads we put out, what content we create, et cetera, to some extent. We can't control whether or not someone's looking for a smoothie today. We can't control whether or not someone's looking for a 21 pack, a seven pack. We can't, there's, we can't control that Facebook changes shit. What we can control is that we're doing everything every single day that is pointing us in the right direction, getting us to where we need to be. Does that line of reasoning help? Or is that just like, nope, still fucking anxious, still pisses me off? It does if you remind yourself of it, but it's very difficult in the moment to remind yourself to control the controllable. Now, I, I tell myself that a lot, but like, I think it was my bike ride, was it Saturday or Sunday, whichever day I went for the long, awesome bike ride, definitely Saturday because it was Mother's Day Sunday. Um, I, I started stressing out about something. I was like, dude, control the controllable. I literally said that on, on the bike ride and I said that to myself many times, like you can't do anything about it. That is beyond your control. And I think that's a big piece of it. So that's, that's a really good point, Matt. You know, it's, it's no matter where you are, you could be entry level at Target, you could be a VP at Ecolab, like you could be at these giant companies, you're gonna have the same issues. Yep. And you could be just beginning, you could be the CEO of the company. 
you're going to still every single day wake up and have stresses and anxiety and issues. I'm looking at Abby sitting on the floor right now. Abby's in charge of all of our social media. And I, I'm pretty certain that Abby goes home and like, what the hell? How do we get more traction? Why is this not working? Is this ever going to work? What the hell, right? It, it doesn't matter the role. Like, like we said at the beginning, it's always going to be there. Uh, it's, it's, it's figuring out, I think it's figuring out why are you doing what you're doing and, and staying committed to it even when it's not quite working the right way. Like my, my son asked me a question the other day and, and I don't know why this is just really sticking in my head lately. And he said, dad, if you didn't need money, like if you had all the money you needed or money wasn't even a thing, right? What would you do all day? Like what, what would your day look like? And how many people can't answer that question? Because you don't know what you're doing or why you're doing it or what actually makes you happy and what fulfills you, which I think just makes this whole anxiety thing a million times worse because you, you don't know what is happiness for you. And so you just, every day, you just kind of go through the motions. Dude, it, Matt, it's really funny. I saw this morning on the Instagram that someone was like, hey, you want to like de-stress you know, walk out, get in your car, drive to the mountains, never leave. And I was, I was like, yeah, like that might make sense for like one in a million people, but the vast majority of people after like a week would be like, fuck, I'm bored. Uh, what do I do? And I think that like that, that's the other interesting part about that. You're right. Like what makes you happy? <clears throat> and then understanding like what makes you happy can change, right? Like we, you and I love to golf. Could you golf every, if you, if you had nothing to do, Matt, for the next year, could you golf every single day for an entire year? Do you think you would still love golf in a year? As much as you do today? Uh, I think I'd get <clears throat> pretty bored after a while. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I think that's a that's the thing, right? But I, I love that question. That's actually one of my networking questions. If I gave you $5 million, you can't work and you can't give it to a charity, what would you go do? Well, so if you think through that lens, are you really asking me that question, by the way? Or? No, I'm just saying that's a great that's a question um, I love to ask people. <laughs> I'm trying to bring it back to the thing that gives you the most anxiety in the business as the owner, as the CEO, is, money. is the money part. But, and yes, of course it matters because if you can't pay the bills, you don't have a thing. But, but on the same hand, like, what are you doing this for? Right? Like, and if you can find what you're doing this for and, and put your all into doing that every day and getting the fulfillment and the excitement out of it, I think that then in turn makes the money come. I'm going to have a snarky response to that. It, it, yeah, no, I'm doing this because I genuinely care about impacting people's health, their nutrition, giving them a better option, taking, giving them time back in their day, empowering people. Right. But when you don't sell anything for five days, you're not empowering anybody. Right. And so and, it's really fucking and, depressing. And so if, if sales were okay and, and it was fine and bills were being paid or money wasn't an issue, would your number one anxiety flip to, man, I'm not impacting enough people? How no. do we impact more people? No, because like right? I, I, again, like th that's an interesting piece. For some people, yeah, I, I think I think I think if you own a business or you start a business, like there's always gonna be that anxiety, right? Like Matt, I found a packaging issue that didn't fucking exist, right? Because I needed something to worry about. <laughs> and so like there's there's all these things that to me, like yes, money is always gonna be the every business, right? Every single business, money is a major component. And for me, like if, if, if we're cash flow positive, I'll find the, you know, I'll find the next, I'm sure I'll find the next thing to worry about. Like, it's just, I think that's just part of, part of the shtick. But I mean, right now it, it, like money is the biggest piece, right? Because I don't want to not pay people, vendors, whatever. I want to grow. I know we've got a totally amazing product and I genuinely believe that if everybody drank one every day, they would see amazing results in their life. I mean, like I told you last night, like I told you. Like I've been trying to be I'm trying to be better. I've been trying to not stress eat at night. I'm a stress eater at night. Love to bake shit. Eat it. Last night I was like, dude, Oli, you're gonna be strong today, man. You're gonna be so tough. And like, got the kids to bed. I was like, oh man, those chocolate chip cookies in the pantry are looking dank. And then I was like, no, dude, you, you, dude, you're you're not actually hungry for chocolate chip cookies. Like, you are hungry, but don't 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 be don't be a dumbass. So I went and grabbed a switch back. I made a tropic roar. I told Matt like. How pathetic is this? For the first time ever, I had a Tropic Roar, I had a smoothie after eight o'clock at night and I own the business. It was the most dope evening snack because it tasted good, had a hint of sweetness, filled me up, gave me water. Like I was golden. And like, that's why I'm doing this, right? I got to remind myself of that. That at the end of the day, like if more people had these, like we use them, 
I think the world would be better off. And at the end of the day, like, yeah, we make money, but also I want a healthier population. I want people to be better, be healthier. I love it, man. And maybe that's the, you frame that up on the wall and you put it somewhere. And then when the money's not coming in, it's like, well, okay, fine. Got it. Or in the packaging is breaking down or when we have a big team and we have to fire someone or hire more people or like, there's always going to be, no, we're not firing you, Abby. Abby's gone. Abby just you're fired up all of a sudden when I said that. Uh, but like, like we we've said it five times already, and we'll say it one more time, and I won't say it again. No matter no matter where you are in the phase of the business, there's gonna be things that are gonna keep you up and and anxiety and stress and all the ugh, right. And then add kids to the mix and wives and you know husbands and everything else. Um, it's figuring out for you, regrounding on why you're doing what you're doing, and get a little exercise, get a little movement, just get out of the situation for 20 minutes. Go for a walk, go, go do something. I, I bet when you come back, you're gonna have a way different mindset on how you tackle whatever the issue is. It is really funny, like I, we talk about exercise, I know we're, we're, we're gonna wrap up here in a second, but Matt and I oftentimes pass each other on the road out here walking because we're <laughs> on phone calls and like, well, like I, 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 don't, I, I don't know if I take many phone calls from my desk, I'm out walking because I just feel better and I mean, I, I know Matt does the same thing. Like, I love be, that's one that's one, one amazing thing about this. Um, I can just get out and walk. When you're on the fifth floor of a building, it's very difficult on a phone call to be like, "Oh, give me uh, three minutes to get down the elevator, not lose you, get outside, and then all this noise." Right? Like, we can just walk right out our door, go for a nice walk, have a conversation, yeah. which is amazing and it helps me de-stress throughout the day. Awesome, sweet. 